Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California for all things Vespa, whether you need parts for your vintage Vespa, accessories for your new scooter, tools, and more, check us out on the web, ScooterWest.com. So let's get right to it. About eight years ago, I did a valve adjustment video on the Vespa GTS, and it pretty much applies to the full GT range of scooters. So whether you have a old GT200 from 2006, a GTS 250 from 2009, or any of the GTS 300s, you know, dating back to about 2010, to the very latest ones, which they refer to as the GTS 300 HPE. And that's what we'll be doing a uh, valve adjustment on, is this 2020 Vespa GTS 300 HPE. So you might want to still check out my old video from eight years ago, just type Vespa GTS valve adjustment on YouTube, it's probably the first one that comes up. Um, and I kind of had a cylinder head off, off the scooter to kind of show exactly what I'm doing. Well, this one's going to be a quick hitter. I'm just going to show many of the differences on the newer motors. And I'm just going to quickly go through the job and get it to the point where I have access to the valve cover. Get that valve cover off, check it out. And I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to check the cam and the um, automatic decompression mechanism because on some of these early 2020s, they had some issues. So let's get right to it. All right, the first order is we got to loosen up the shocks and kind of partly dismantle the scooter. So we're essentially gonna tip the motor from the front engine mounts. So the motor tips up like this. So got two of the bolts for the rearmost of this little fuel access cover. It's like a little cover for the fuel tank. Obviously leave the cap in place if you're gonna use power tools near it. Zip the cat off and you can see these two fasteners also hold the, the rack in place. So you lift this thing off. Uh, one thing about these 2020 and later models, they're gonna have a tube under here that attaches the, the, the fuel lid to the thing. And you can just leave it here because all we need to access is these two upper shock mounts. So at this point I have the front wheel clamped in this motorcycle lift. Uh, you can look at my past videos for how to jack or support a modern Vespa in the past, kind of how to do it without a motorcycle lift. But unfortunately, no matter how you do this job, you're gonna need to have either a motorcycle lift with a clamp or fabricate something to clamp the front end of the scooter. And in the center of the frame, I have a scissor jack. And we have that part number at scooterwest.com and it's tool scooter jack. And you can find it on our website. It's been a real popular item. Real useful to have the scissor jack to lift up the scooter. So underneath this cover, there's the pair of fasteners that hold the upper shock mounts. And I'm kind of cheating, use a electric impact. Uh, in the past, I've showed how to loosen these with basic tools, you know, if you're changing out a rear shock. Um, there's a little flat on the top of the threaded insert that you can um, remove. So you want to do that on both the left and right side shock on the upper mount. And we're trying to do this without, you could also loosen the lower parts of the shock, but you got to dismantle more of the scooter. You got to remove the muffler, loosen up the air box if you want to access those lower mounting points of the, of the shocks. So the upper mounting point of the shock, you got the rubber spacer, you got a large flat washer, you got these star washers, and if they're pretty compressed and worn out, I'd recommend ordering a new one and you have the nut. So that's the order of how these parts go and pretty much reverse the assembly. You want to torque this to about, about 14 or 15 foot pounds. You can put Loctite on it if you want the extra security of knowing that's not gonna come loose when you assemble it. So I have the scissor jack set up in the center of the frame and we're only gonna partly jack the rear of the scooter up. Uh, we're gonna need to loosen the air box next, so. And about that's all we could take at this point. Uh, if you have an older model, you're going to need a Phillips uh, drive screwdriver. If you have the newer one, it's going to be T30 Torx screws in there. So at the very front most of the air box, there's a fastener. I can just barely get clearance with the motor just dropped down. So you got three of these big screws here. And the last one's on the rear here. And you may want to just either use a magnet or a needle nose and grab those screws. And keep in mind there's a couple washers on each one of these screws. 
On these newer scooters, they're all identical. It's gonna be a flat washer and another one of those star washers, very similar to that upper shock mount. And at this point, you can kind of shift the whole air box up and out of its mount. And I'm shifting off to the side because you want to get away from the shocks because we're going to lift the motor further up. Um, on these newer ones, you don't need to worry about disconnecting the spark plug. If you have a 2019 and older model, you're going to want to disconnect the spark plug cap before you lift the motor any further. So at this point, the motor's kind of, I would say, like a 30 degree angle. You can see the tires touching the ground here. You gotta be careful. You don't wanna go too high on this. You end up with the ground wire that's very tight, like it is right now. And, um, and same with that spark plug wire. You gotta get that disconnected if you have the older ones. Uh, this newer model's got a access cover for a filter and removes real easily so we have access to your your crankshaft nut, so we're able to turn over the motor. If you have an older one, go ahead and take all 11 fasteners off this, the belt cover, including the center nut that holds the clutch. Uh, if you watch my belt job videos, you'll see how to completely dismantle the belt cover, because then you're able to access the crank pulley nut to turn over the engine. And if you want to gain a little more height, this upper mount is where a ground wire is connected and a bracket for your um, coolant hose. So go ahead and just disconnect that. You can leave it hanging. And at this point, and that's about as high as you want to go with it. Uh, the shocks do bind up a little bit towards the rear of the tank, um, but with this loose air box, you're able to get the most articulation of the motor dropping down. And of course, there's a perfect time to access the air filter. You have easy access to these upper mounting points if you do want to check the air filter. And on the Vespa scooters, every 12,000 miles or 20,000 kilometers is the recommended interval for a valve adjustment. Uh, same with several other items like the spark plug and air filter. So you need to access all this stuff anyways, the belt drive and so on. I'm just doing just the valve adjustment. You may be asking reasons why you might do a valve adjustment. Um, I'd recommend doing it, you know, as per with the factory service intervals. Like I said, 12,000 miles, 20,000 kilometers. But hypothetically, maybe you have a Vespa GTS, you've never done the valves on it, or it's unknown, and the scooter stalls when it's cold. Well, usually that's an indication of a tight exhaust valve or a tight intake valve in some cases. So. And that's always a good starting point is to check your valves, make sure they're all within the correct clearance before you start diagnosing other problems with the scooter. So that's always pretty important. A lot of people like to come to conclusions and replace parts, shoot the parts cannon at the scooter and think they're gonna fix it. But sometimes you just gotta do the basic uh, service stuff, kind of get it all out of the way. Now we have easy access to the, the top of the cylinder head and we'll start working from the inside here. All right, so first order of action, if you haven't already done it, pop the spark plug cap off. And one of the easier ways to do it is with a long kneel nose and just gently rock the spark plug cap straight off the spark plug. It's pretty easy to break either the spark plug or the, the spark plug cap if you're not uh, easy on this. And a lot of times it just takes a little rocking. And see, I just kind of wiggled a little bit and it popped right off. Uh, perfect time to check the spark plug cap as well. See how it's a little bit loose on the, um, the cable? Well, these are actually threaded onto the wires. So just go ahead and thread that on. Make sure that boot's in good shape. Of course, a good time to put some dielectric grease in there to um, help insulate that boot, keep moisture out of it and causing an issue. Uh, five eighths uh, spark plug socket. With the motor tipped up, I have real easy access to the spark plug. It's pretty miserable to change a spark plug with the motor tipped down. The nice thing about these newer scooters, uh, typically you um, check the spark plug at the um, valve adjustment intervals or you replace it. So there's no need to really just replace it just for the heck of replacing it. Uh, they typically last no problem for the duration of the valve adjustment intervals. So this, is, this has got the factory Iridium spark plug, the MR7BI dash eight. Uh, we have those available at Scooter West. These give a very, very long service life. Uh, I would say you might even get 24,000 miles out of it. Obviously you're going way past the service intervals. 
but you know, 12,000 miles about what this spark plug will last. So this has still got the original hose clamp on this breather hose. The best way to um, destroy this one-time use uh, hose clamp is to use a diagonal set of cutters, nice side cutters that are sharp. You can see I cut it. If you don't have a side cutter, you could probably carefully grind it or you can pry it off. And once you get it loose, it will kind of just come right out. You can't reuse that. I would just suggest replacing it with a worm gear a hose clamp. I do have those one-time use hose clamps to make it look like it did from the factory here in the shop and a special tool that, um, that allows those to be easily installed. So say you have a stubborn hose, easy way to do that is get a pick in there and you can usually pry the hose off. So pulling a hose kind of gives you that Chinese finger trap kind of problem. But when you push the hose off with a tool, it easily comes right off the hose barb versus trying to pull it with a needle nose where it gets tighter and tighter as you pull it more. So I'll tuck that away. I always check that hose on older, higher mileage scooters. Sometimes that hose is starting to deteriorate. Perfect time to change it. Take a 10 millimeter socket. And I have this nice little, it has like a ball joint on it. So it makes it a little easier. It's the regular 10 millimeter. Of course, a quarter inch drive, which is a smaller size ratchet, makes this job a lot easier. So at this point, I'm just, loosening all four of the fasteners. It's five in total. And of course, the most difficult one I'm gonna save for last. And sometimes there's quite a bit of friction because you have these rubber grommets set. And this last one, just barely get the socket right in there. You might have to use a small extension because you have that hump, which is the valve cover breather. There's an O-ring be between this valve cover breather and the aluminum cylinder or valve cover head that you can replace if it's starting to leak. And they get to a point where they're pretty easy to remove once you get past all that friction of that rubber washer that's between the valve cover and the bolt. You can see that rubber washer and I definitely recommend replacing those along with the valve cover gasket. So once all the bolts are out, easy access to the valve cover. It pops right out nice and easy clearance. And you can see there's a gasket here. This is a molded rubber gasket. Uh, sometimes you can get away with reusing it, but you're this far, you might as well replace this inexpensive gasket. No need to use any silicon sealant on that. That's not a good idea to use on this. Uh, you can use a small amount of grease when installing the new gasket. Just kind of goes right in these grooves. It's molded really nicely. And even from the factory, they put no grease on it. It just kind of sits in the groove. You can see it will stay in place, no problem there. And the last thing, there is an O-ring underneath this cover. Uh, typically you don't need to replace it, but if you see some seepage of oil here, perfect time to replace that O-ring that's underneath this. And obviously you remove the four torque screws, take this plastic breather cap off. So go ahead and set the valve cover aside. And now we've exposed the, the valve train. All right, so I got a 19 millimeter socket on a 3 8 drive. Uh, turn this clockwise like you're tightening a bolt. And that cover on the bell cover that we removed, you could go ahead and turn that. And we're gonna turn the motor counterclockwise actually here. So um, just to show you what it does, you have the exhaust valves going down and then the intake valves going down. So after the intake valves start coming back up, you're gonna need to start to watch for top dead center. There's a little pip on the center of the head and on this pulley, it's either gonna have an arrow with a 4V mark, or it's gonna have a small hole like these modern uh, 2020 and later style. And we're just gonna go ahead and side it so that hole will line up with a hole on the plate. There's a plate in here. So either the arrow with the 4V lines up with this dot, or the two holes line up. And obviously you can't really see it from your angle, but I'm looking through, there's a small hole on this plate behind this cam chain sprocket. And that's top dead center on the compression stroke. So next you're gonna need some fueler gauges, specifically a 4 thousandths or 1 tenth of a millimeter and a 6 thousandths 
which is 15 hundredths of a millimeter. Uh, the intakes are four thousandths is a standard clearance for them and the exhaust are at six thousandths. So it's pretty much the same across the board for the GTS and many of the other Vespa products. You can buy the whole set of motorcycle specific fielder gauges that we have available on our web store and it's Tool Valve. Just search the Scooter West web store for Tool Valve and you'll find these. They're gonna be much, much easier than using the full size fielder gauges you find at an auto parts store. So the intakes are up at top and I have the .004, which is four thousandths and we're at top dead center with a cold engine and we want to see how these go in there. So I can drag that through fairly easily. That's pretty good. There's just a tiny bit of drag. That's a perfect clearance on that one. And just to show you too much, I'm going to go to five thousandths, which still would be an acceptable measurement, but I got to really force that in there and you can see it really is sticking. That's too much. So, we're just at the exact clearance that this valve should be at. We're very, very close. And again, it could be five thousandths or 0.13 millimeter, and that would be acceptable as well. It's more dangerous when they're tight. A loose valve is a happy valve, as they say. Uh, obviously, too loose, you're gonna have um, a ticking valve train, and if you're way too loose, you're gonna lose uh, power from the engine because you're not acting on the valve all the way, you know, at, at the peak speeds. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and check this right one. And I know this one's a little tighter. So that's a four thousandths and I got to fight it just a little bit more. So this one, I'll probably just loosen ever so slightly. Two ways to go about it. Uh, Scooter West store, we sell the full set of Motion Pro uh, valve adjustment tools. If you're doing a lot of valve adjustments, this is going to make the job a little easier. And the part number on the Scooter West web store is Tool VA dash WRE and it's a whole set of three of these uh, three inserts and three wrenches eight nine and ten millimeters so it pretty much covers all this any scooter has these uh, threaded adjusters really nice because there's no shims involved like a lot of other scooters and motorcycles uh, you pretty much have that goes right on and then this little flat bladed thing pretty much uh, engages with it so the idea behind this is I'm going to hold the screwdriver I'm going to crack open the screw and at this point I can make the adjustment and I'm just going to go in just a tiny bit. It even has these uh, graduations on the top if you do want to uh, inspect it and you hold your adjustment and just tighten it. And you don't ever need to get a torque wrench on there, it just needs to be a good little snug tight and at this point I'm just a little bit too tight. And if you want the old fashioned way of adjusting or maybe you're not doing too many adjustments on valves, you can also do it with a combination wrench. So the closed end of a combination wrench, put the flat blade screwdriver in there. Obviously the exhaust is gonna be a little harder. So go ahead and loosen the lock nut and we'll loosen the screw just ever so slightly. Hold your adjustment and tighten. And it's a little tricky sometimes to get the fuel down because as you tighten the lock nut, it wants to tighten that screw as well. So it makes it a little difficult. That's perfect. So I could slip that in and out. No problem, and we go to the next size up. It takes definitely a lot of force to push that next size up. That's just out of clearance, so that's perfect. Now we'll move on to the exhaust, and obviously you can't see what's going on nearly as easy. All the same uh, theories of adjustment, but you go for a looser clearance, and that specifically is six thousandths or 0.15 millimeters. So. You just have to kind of, after you do the intake, you kind of get an idea of where to put the fielder gauge, you know, specifically between the top of the valve and that little adjustment pad, and it fits right in there. And again, this is, you're more likely to find overly tight exhaust valves. This is perfect. I just feel a good amount of drag, you know, a small amount of drag I meant on that, that six thousandths adjuster and if I go up to the eight thousandths which is the next size up 0 0.20 millimeter it's going to take a tremendous amount of force to get that in there it's dragging quite a bit and that's too much um, believe it or not you can even jam too thick of a fielder gauge in there because you're acting on the springs of the valves and that's not what you want you just want that nice real ever so slight drag of the fielder gauge in in between that's kind of indicating you got the perfect clearance. 
So both those exhausts are correct and I made a minor adjustment to the intake, that's all it took. Um, if you found zero clearance or very little clearance on the exhaust and you had a scooter that was stalling frequently, that's most likely the culprit. But sometimes if they were run with zero clearance too long, you may burn up the valves and have further uh, problems where you may have to rebuild the engine. You'd probably want to do a leak down test on the top end of the engine um, to further diagnose your stalling issue. Uh, the last thing to check while you're in here is this is your automatic decompression system. The cam chains and the cam chain guides are very reliable on these Vespa motors, not really an issue. Um, you can kind of check the cam chain, you know, get like a pick under here. And a little bit of wiggle is fine, but that lifts quite a bit off the sprocket, might indicate you have a problem um, and you'd ha hear some other noise. But this is your uh, decompression mechanism and at top dead center, you can roll that back and it should just drop right into place, no problems. Um, on these early 2020s, they sometimes got the clearances wrong with this adjuster, so when it gets hot, this would get stuck um, in this lower position and it wouldn't swing out. You know, the, um, it would just be stuck in a position where it would be difficult for the motor to start. So pretty much once the motor starts, this swings out and uh, it's back to the normal, that's the normal running position, but when it comes, the RPMs comes down to zero, that drops in. And so what that does is it acts on the valve ever so slightly with a little extra cam in there to uh, lower the compression ratio when you're cranking the scooter over. Makes it so they can use a smaller starter motor. So that's why they have this mechanism. It makes for a lighter weight, more compact motor, if you're wondering what this mechanism does. It's only there during the starting. Um, the only time it ever has problems is if this mechanism is sticking. So I hope that video helped you out. I'm not going to show how to put it all back together. Pretty much just play the video in reverse and it pretty much shows you how to put it all back together. Pretty straightforward. Definitely a good idea to replace all those rubber bits and the valve cover. Um, don't really want a valve cover leaking after you do a valve adjustment job. So anytime I do in my service department or have my guys do it, they just replace those valve cover gaskets and those five little grommets. Um, those little grommets. I think they're 830249, you'll need five of those, that's a Piaggio part number. Uh, sorry, I don't have the gasket in the back of my head, um, but you can just search valve cover gasket on the Scooter West web store and you'll see it. Of course, good time to replace the spark plug while you're in there, but hopefully that covers all those mysteries of checking the valve. Sometimes the most difficult thing for a do-it-yourselfer mechanic to do. And I would say the most difficult part of this whole job isn't actually adjusting or taking off the valve cover, but is preparing the scooter to do the valve adjustment. You're never going to get that valve cover off with the scooter on the center stand. I'll tell you that right now. But thanks for watching this robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. If you want to see this video in a little more detail, look at my video that I did about eight years ago. It's kind of like I'm redoing some of the videos. I've done some of them so long ago. Um, I thought I'd just do them on a newer version of the bike because things have changed over the years, just slightly between the models. Until next time, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and Scooter West. Thanks for watching.